Let's finish learning our essential comparative and indefinite adjectives. We'll start with comparative adjectives, which are attached to Joel's blue car. We've learned the comparative words más, which means more, menos, which means less, and mejor, which means better. Recently, Joel decided to prepare for travel in case he ever goes to the wonderful lugares that he wants to visit someday. He's put a tiny kayak on top of the car in case he encounters water. But instead of a paddle for the kayak, Joel has an enormous oar that's even bigger than the boat itself. Joel boasts, "My oar is bigger than my boat." The word for bigger is mayor. There's something important to note about these comparative adjectives. The word mejor means both better and best. In English, we have two separate words for those, but they're the same in Spanish. In the same way, mayor can mean either bigger or biggest. In general, for the nerds, this means that Joel's comparative adjectives can also be used as superlative adjectives. If you don't know what that means, then don't worry about it. Here's an example of where mejor means best. The sentence says, "I hope to go to the best place of all." And the way that this is phrased is, "I hope to go al mejor lugar de todos." Espero ir al mejor lugar de todos. Using the same phrasing, we could change it to, "I hope to have the biggest house of all." I hope tener la mayor casa. De todas. Let's go to the other side of the garage and learn our final indefinite adjectives. On the wall of Joel's garage, Joel now has some knee pads suspended next to the mud splotch. But strangely enough, when anyone asks Joel about these knee pads, he insists that they don't belong to anyone and they weren't put here by anyone. No person put them here, and they don't belong to any goon in the world. Recall that the mud splotch here represents algunos, which means some or several indefinite people, such as algunos hombres. But now we have a new word, ningún. This means no as an adjective, and it's used the exact same way that algún is used, but it means the opposite. So, for example, algún hombre would mean some man, but ningún hombre. Would mean no man. Over on the right side of the scene, next to the toad in the grass that represents mucho and todo, Joel has planted a tree. But this tree now looks like it has a face, which makes Joel think that it could be not a tree, but an ent, which are the talking tree-like creatures from the Lord of the Rings. And maybe it's here to take care of the things in Joel's yard. This ent represents the word suficiente, which means enough or sufficient. For example, enough money would be suficiente money. Leaning against the tree is a very similar word. It's the wishbone from the butcher's stand. This represents the word bastante, with a stress on stand because the thing's standing up against the tree. But here, instead of quite. It means quite a bit of, or enough. So mucho dinero would mean much money. Suficiente dinero would mean enough money, but bastante dinero would mean quite a bit of money. Now, if we move too far to the right in this scene, toward the edge of the house, we get too much. So this tiny part of Joel's yard has become very crowded and messy. And to add to this mess is a framed picture of the mess. This word is demasiado, which resembles the sound of messy yard, but it means too much or an enormous amount. So demasiado dinero would mean a ton of money or too much money. Inside the garage, the set of drawers beside Joel's otro car is completely empty. Joel keeps air in the more special drawers, but the rest of the drawers are devoid even of air. He likes to say that some of the drawers, or certain drawers, have air in them. The word ciertos, 
which sounds like certain, but with a stress on air, ciertos, means certain or some of. So, for example, certain men would be ciertos hombres. A chirping voice can be heard inside the wall of the garage above the washing machine. Who's in there? Joel asks. Help! shouts a bird in response. I don't have any air in here. Jill isn't convinced. How are you talking if you don't have any air? Well, I want good air, represents the bird. This wall air isn't good enough for me. I can't sing properly with just any old wall air. The word cualquier may sound complicated, but it has stresses on the sounds wall and air, cualquier. What it means is any or any old. For example, any old person would be cualquier persona, or any old man, or just any man, would be cualquier hombre. On the corner between the garage and the messy yard by the driveway, another item from the butcher's stand has made an appearance. The hook that represents the word cuanto, as in as much as you want, is hanging here. But here the word does not have an accent mark. It's just cuanto, C-U-A-N-T-O, with no accent. It means something like as much as. Now this word is very complicated, and it's used in a couple of idioms. The idioms tend to relate to correspondence. So, for example, in English, we say, the more you search, the more you find, using a comma in the middle. Spanish does this as well, but the wording is different. Instead, it's cuanto más you search, más you find. Now, this use of cuanto is impossible to translate literally. The best way to learn is simply by memorizing an example and then modifying that yourself when you're speaking. So for now, the example is, the more you search, the more you find. Cuanto más buscas, más encuentras. Here's another idiom with cuanto. The idiom is en cuanto, which makes absolutely no sense when you translate it literally. What it means is regarding. It's somewhat comparable to the English idiom as far as, for example, as far as that goes. So the idiom for as far as that goes is en cuanto a eso. En cuanto a eso. We can modify this to as far as our house goes, and that would be en cuanto a nuestra casa. Just keep that in mind because you are going to hear native speakers using this idiom sometimes, and it just doesn't mean what it literally sounds like. It just means that they're referring to something and emphasizing it in some way. Now let's look at how some of these other indefinite adjectives can be used, like demasiado and cierto. He stays in the story too much time. That would be, he stays in the story demasiado tiempo. Se queda en la historia demasiado tiempo. How about, stop, I already gave you enough reasons. That would be, basta, ya I gave you suficientes razones. Basta, ya te di suficientes razones. How about, someone can stay at any moment? So that would be actually literally one can stay at any moment or uno puede to stay en cualquier momento. Uno puede quedarse en cualquier momento. Next. She made herself a good friend of a certain boy. This is she made herself muy amiga de cierto boy. Ella se había hecho muy amiga de cierto niño. Besides practicing all of these idioms, you should practice listing all of your indefinite adjectives one by one. In each case, make sure you can use the word before a noun. For example, otra casa, alguna casa, ninguna casa, suficientes casas, and so on. List these indefinite adjectives word by word from memory and check to see if you've remembered them all. 
If not, go back and see if you can enhance your memory so that you can remember all of your indefinite adjectives before moving on.